sure he has a great school update for us. Good morning. Uh, I kind of see people sitting and eating. I have to have a walk and talk. Seems like I'm on duty most of the time. <laughs> really, we have lunch right now. We have four lunches of over 900 students. Over 3,600 students on this campus at any one time, including staff and visitors. Typically, there's 4,000 people on this campus. That being said, it works very well. This year, small challenge. Ready to roll, all of a sudden we have a small weather event. <laughs> um, this was, sadly, it's not the first time I've dealt with those weather events. This was my third major storm to deal with, and fourth time I've had school canceled from college. So we knew right away with that particular type of event that what students need when they come back is normalcy. You have to do the rock, you have to do the anchor, and you have to provide something for them that they want to get back to normal. In fact, there was a point where I was in Lowe's or HEB or somewhere, and one of my students saw me and came up, and we were out for Harvey, and he said, Mr. Gans, are we ever, can we please just go back to school? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired being at home. So we immediately came back and without any further ado we jumped right in. And the kids were very happy to be back and it felt like it was the second week of school that they were going. But they were supposed to go and very happy to be That being said, there are always challenges on this campus. We are a large school, but we are not as large as our population would indicate. We have 16 portable classrooms. We have 16 teachers who do not have classrooms. We have four classes that are held in areas where we really don't want whole classes. And what I mean by that is the team meeting room that sits in between the locker rooms is now a classroom because I gotta have it. I, my pack, my auditorium, I have to use that as a classroom, which is really not a classroom. Some of these larger group instructions, I have to use that as a classroom. <coughs> so that we don't flow as many. Two of my photos are coming out of labs. So they don't have a lab to do science in. They have to go into somebody else's lab, which means that person can't be in the room. All of those are challenges for these students. <coughs> they move forward, and it seems like they don't miss a beat. If you've never been in our halls at uh, Transition, I invite you to come. Uh, if you, have, you might want to get a few shots, because there are a few. Oftentimes, uh, some of the work things run around because they do come to school sick. So be careful. There will be stuff in there. That being said, on the high school, there's always something happening. Uh, we are out of volleyball now. We did lose in the playoffs, unfortunately, but they did lose. We have our football game Saturday. We have uh, we have girls basketball and boys basketball. We just finished the first play on contract for a band. We have our uh, our choir has had some of their programs. Our first four-day event, a four-performance event of the Summer Night's Dream happens next week. Also on Saturday, the Kima is using the building for a um, giveaway slash sign-up. So beyond that, no, there's not a lot going on. <laughs> we feel very lucky to be in this community. This community supports the school, it always has. We do a great job. We're happy to see some of our parents. It's not good anymore, but I can't. I know. I'm fine. Do you have any questions for me before I head off? Please ask some so I don't feel a bunch of you. Do you pay every game last night? Okay, that's great. Uh, I will say, I was hoping in the, the other series that Cleveland was going to beat the Yankees. Uh, one of my students I taught in the eighth grade plays for Cleveland, Jay Bruce. So he, he's done great. Last thing I'm going to say is our biggest deal here is children now carry computers with them. They're all smartphones. They know more information than we ever did. They said a smartphone is not a wise we must teach them how to be wise. And that is our biggest challenge. Any other questions for me? We have two people working for the Astros organization, by the way. So one of them in the dugout, and one of them sits on the third baseline. So we're very, very happy. Thank you very much.
we met and talked about what was going to be important to all of you today, we realized lots of it had to do with post Harvey, and it made perfect sense that we had um, some information come from um, from Precinct 4 office. And so today we have Kent Klingerman with us, who is the community liaison for the Harris County Precinct 4 Commissioner Jack Cable's office. Kent? Yes, thank you. And thank you to Tess the High School for hosting today and for hosting the Harvey uh, Relief Fair coming up this Saturday. I know uh, Representative Puberty was pivotal in getting that to come together with the Harris County Office of Emergency Management, so we're real excited that that's happening here in Tassatita. So again, my name is Kent Klingerman from uh, Commissioner Jack Kegel's office in Harris County Precinct 4. I work for Commissioner Kegel's Community Assistance Department. As the name implies, I'm here to assist the community. So I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. So, what you see here is what Precinct 4 looks like. We'll jump over to the next slide and see some of the attributes of Precinct 4. Uh, 1.3 million people live inside those boundary lines, over 2,500 road miles to maintain, 40 plus parks. Uh, the population of Precinct 4 actually exceeds that of eight states in the Union. So, if we were our own state, we would be uh, larger than um, eight states. So, the county commissioners are almost like little donors in a way, which is certainly not normal uh, for county commissioners, which means with that many people and so many road miles to maintain, we have a big mess to clean up after uh, an event like Harvey. Let's go ahead and jump to that next slide and see what the uh, uh, Harris County Engineering Department has been working on over the last two months. Initially, they said for a storm of this magnitude, it could take six months for all that debris to be picked up, and the commissioner said that is not acceptable. Uh, so we moved some budget around and got some contractors and uh, got those crews in to get this mess cleaned up. Uh, over 500,000 cubic yards of debris already picked up by the contractors. Uh, that does not include what TxDOT has picked up with their crews. They helped us out uh, a tremendous amount. Uh, it's nearly 12,000 truckloads of debris from the storm. And uh, we're about to start up that third and final pass coming up on November the 5th. So uh, if you know anyone that doesn't have it out there already, uh, make sure that's out there so it's ready to go when we do that final sweep across Precinct 4. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons, uh, those numbers also did not include the um, drop-off site where individuals could bring their debris from their home in their truck or trailer and drop it off for us. So a couple of reasons that we did that. Uh, one, we know people that live in the Houston area are do-it-yourselfers, get-her-done kind of people. So instead of waiting for the county to come by in three weeks, six weeks, God only knows, uh, they could get that taken care of on their own, save taxpayer dollars, and uh, get their recovery process uh, on the fast track. Also, those um, staging areas that we have around the county for the contractors to take that debris, another reason that we, we did that was the time it was taking for those trucks to get to the landfill site, the final destination of the landfill, was taking so long, waiting in the queues for those trucks to unload, uh, we decided to have those staging areas around the county so they could drop off that debris there. Our equipment also break that down to about 50% less of the original volume coming off the trucks. Break it down and then get it to the final destination just to expedite that process. Uh, the engineering permits um, department have expedited those rebuilding permits. We know that people after facing a disaster like that, you're not worried about what boxes to check and all the details, you just want to get your permit and get it done. So Harris County Engineering expedited uh, the permit process. Over half a million homes visually inspected, uh, 30,000 structures were flooded, and uh, 29,000 rebuilding permits have already been issued. The remainder of those are still going through the inspection process. Uh, some of those homes have been substantially damaged and they're making that determination whether it is uh, kind of past the point of no return that those homes might be eligible for, for buyouts and things of that nature. So that's uh, those last remaining homes. It's less than a thousand uh, that they're going through in that. So that's kind of the, the basics as far as the uh, recovery for the storm debris removal and the rebuilding process for individuals. It's not all dirty work, fortunately. Uh, we do uh, maintain the parks in Precinct 4, so we have a little bit of fun stuff we get to do at Precinct 4. Uh, we have 40 plus parks, like one of the first slides talked about, uh, with archery ranges, equestrian trails, 
canoe launches. A lot of wonderful amenities right there in our own backyard that maybe we don't really think about here in the Precinct 4 area. Uh, however, we did have some damage to some of our parks. Go ahead and skip to the, the next slide. Uh, one of the commissioner's uh, baby projects is the Spring Creek Greenway, if you're not familiar with that. We're in the process of connecting the dots along Spring Creek, which is the north border of Harris County, and, and connecting those parks that we already have with the trail system. So you can jump on your bike at Jesse Jones Park here near the Humble area and ride through our trail system all the way to the west side of Tomball at Spring Creek Park. Over 40 miles of continuous trails. If you're training for an Ironman or an MS-150, uh, a great amenity right here at your disposal. Uh, we did have uh, some damage to some of the areas of the Spring Creek Greenway. The, um, the trail is back open from Dennis Johnson Park near where the Hardy Toll Road meets 45 up there in that area on Riley Puzzle. Um, that is open all the way down to Jesse Jones Park here in the Humble area. There will be some periodic repairs happening uh, over the coming weeks for different spots along that trail, but all that information will be uh, on our website, hcp4.net, keep track of where the closures are if you're wanting to get out there and, and train for those long bike rides. So some of the damage that uh, we, well before I get to that, uh, the Parks Department is moving forward with the purchase of uh, the Edgewater Park, and the park development of a boat launch will be a top priority following that purchase. That's over just south of Kingwood, and near the Forest Cove area. So starting on the east side, kind of moving west, uh, Jesse Jones Park and Nature Center had about six feet of water inside our Nature Center. So that's going to be closed uh, up to a year, uh, as early as eight months, probably up to a year for the renovations there. However, the park area, all the outdoor <laughs> facilities, is back up and running. And as we go west toward Mercer Arboretum, uh, that's right where um, like Treshwood and, and Alding Westfield, that area. Uh, the east side is very much like Jones Park. Uh, the gardens and the visitor center and buildings on the east side of Aldi and Westfield uh, suffered some subst substantial damage, uh, multiple feet of water inside that building. Uh, so that will be closed for about a year as well. The library right there next door uh, was a total loss as well, so we're not sure uh, if that will be relocated to a different side, what the plans are for the library there at Mercer Arboretum. However, the good news is on the west side of Alling Westfield, all that park area is now open again. The playgrounds and picnic area and hiking trails on the west side are open. And Lindsay Lyons Park, here off of Atchison Cedar Road, uh, that one suffered no damage from Harvey and is operating at a normal capacity. And then the next item up for bids here, the Capital Improvements Department. Uh, they're the department that handles the road expansion, the road improvements the traffic light installation. And anything that's changing to the roads in the area, uh, that's what their responsibilities are. So start up at the top, Tascacita Road, at Tascacita Bend. There's a warranted traffic signal to be installed there. Uh, it's our goal for that to be installed the first quarter of 2018. And then Kings Park Way, from Tascacita uh, to just south of F1960, right there by the Walmart. Uh, we are completing the boulevard section and modification to the traffic signal on the Tasca Cedar Road side. It's currently in design phase, and it's our goal to bid that project the fourth quarter of this year. And that is a joint participation with Harris County Precinct 4 and our friends at Harris County Precinct 2. Then Lockwood Road, that's from Union Pacific Railroad to Beltway 8. Uh, that is a uh, joint participation with the core development right there by Generation Park. Uh, they're widening uh, that from two lane to four lane and upgrading from asphalt pavement to concrete pavement uh, with median and upgraded railroad crossing. Uh, the goal is to bid that project out the first quarter of 2018. Uh, Wilson Road from Beltway 8 to Atasca Cedar Road. That is an upgrade from two-lane asphalt up to four-lane concrete, uh, boulevard section with traffic signal installation at Green's Road, uh, and that is has been awarded as of October the 10th of uh, just a couple weeks ago. Woodland Hills Parkway, that's from Sunset Breeze Drive to Woodland Path Drive, uh, that is extending Woodland Hills Drive from Sunset Breeze Drive to Woodland Path four-lane concrete boulevard uh, with bridge over Williams Gully. 
and that is also the joint participation with Harris County Precinct 2. Uh, goal for construction to be complete um, early second quarter of 2018. And finally, Wooden Hills Parkway at Wells Mark Drive. There's a traffic signal installation in the process there. Uh, hoping to start construction uh, first quarter of 2018. And that's a whole lot of information in a short amount of time. HCP4.net is our website. All those are updated on a regular basis if there's any specific projects you want to track. HCP4.net or reach out to our office. We would love to hear from you. So thanks for letting us uh, come out talk today. Um, next up, as uh, Humble ISD continues to grow, we're very excited to have uh, some of that growth right here in Atascacita. And so today we have Dr. Brian Peters here as the principal of Groves Elementary to let us know about his inaugural soggy wet startup for his new school. Well, thank you, Nancy. Uh, thank you all for inviting me to be here to share about our school, Groves Elementary. We are just right off uh, Westlake Houston on the Madeira Run. A lot of people still can't find us. If you go in, if you use Google Maps, you will not find us. I don't know where you take, but you go know, back to Deer Run, you just keep going when you get there. Or you take Timber Forest, and you just keep going and you find us. Uh, as Bill was sharing earlier, we had a very interesting start to our, to our year. And I think ours was probably even a, a little more interesting. I don't remember the exact dates, but we had fire marshal inspection approval on a Thursday which then got uh, approval to enter the building on a Monday. And this is mid-August. And, you know, that's about the time school started. Our teachers got in the building um, a week before the school opened, was supposed to open for kids, put it that way. And so we were hurriedly preparing, but we were excitedly prepared because, uh, to me, a school is all about the people. We have outstanding people at the Groves. So to have those folks with all those obstacles, they're ready to roll. And I believe that we are rocking and rolling it at Rose Elementary. We have a pre-K through fifth grade currently. We have about 710 students. We have students coming in and out every day. So we're right around 710. We're a little more heavy on the bottom end than at the top. We have about 140. 130, 140 kindergartners, 140 uh, first graders, uh, and then about 110 uh, are in the teens for second and third grade, and then down into the 70s for fourth and fifth grade. But you can imagine how we're growing, and those grade levels are going to go up each year. Uh, the building capacity is built as a 950 student building. Um, we will probably get there much quicker than anybody would hope considering we're already at 700, uh, about 710. We also have a Spanish immersion program, which has been uh, very popular. We have, a, starts in first grade, we have two sections of that, that uh, now teams with uh, Bear Branch Elementary and Pine Forest, so we have uh, three locations within Humble ISD for that. Um, just as Bill was sharing, you know, it's constant excitement and constant activity in our building. Uh, we had over 800 folks attend a, uh, we called it our Monster Mash a couple weekends ago. Uh, over 800 families attended, or 800 people attended that. The next day we partnered with the Groves community and uh, for their Falltoberfest and had four to 500 people attending that event. Uh, coming up on November 11th, we're really excited to have, I can't say first annual because it's the first and it's not the annual, but we're having our first, which we hope will become an annual color run that we're going to do around Veterans Day. So uh, we've invited, I can't remember the exact name of the, the group, but we have somebody coming in to speak to our students and then to help us with the event. It's a group that provides service animals to, um, to veterans. So we're just trying to provide some meaningful uh, learning experiences for our, our children around the idea of Veterans Day. That you know, why are we celebrating this day? Well, uh, bringing in different groups that hopefully every year to um, help our children learn more about the different events that we do. So we're partnering with our community. As my philosophy generally would be is that we've talked a long time for many years that we have to stop doing school the way we've always done school. And, well, it's time to stop talking about it. It's time to start doing it. And I believe we have the right people in place at Groves Elementary with the, the programs we're doing. We embrace technology. 
Uh, as Bill said, yes, this is a smartphone. We have to teach our kids how to use it. But yes, we have to teach them how to use the technology. We can't keep them from it. It is their reality. So we are embracing the technology that we have. We have some of the best tech, at least our technology people are telling me we have some of the best technology in the district. <laughs> and uh, I, I will believe that because uh, with uh, a lot of different the weather events and some of the wireless and things going down, we weren't impacted too much by that. We were generally in pretty good shape. So um, we have uh, a neighboring partner with the Insperity uh, Complex next door and uh, the Adaptive Sports Complex, and that's been a, a great addition to our campus, uh, a great uh, daily play facility for our students. If you haven't had a chance to drive back and, and see, you'll see Groves Elementary, you'll see the Insperity Adaptive Sports Complex, and then I believe I'm to turn, am I just to turn this over to Dr. H? And his, his building, the middle school, going in right next door. So it's just a, an amazing place that's growing up back there. What was once a very forested area, but now, as in many areas, a very growing um, community. So thank you again uh, for having us here. Before I pass on Dr. H, anybody have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you for having me out. I appreciate it. Uh, Humble ISD is a phenomenal district, and Dr. Fagan is here, and members from the community. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Um, this school, middle school number nine, just to point out some of the cool features that that Humble ISD has envisioned for this. This right up here, this is actually an outdoor learning environment right here on the third floor. It's a third, three floors, uh, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. Over here on this side, that's the library. It is actually three stories within, three stories tall. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, yeah, a little bit about myself, uh, since I'm new to Uncle ISD, I just <laughs> am invested in U of H. I'm really bad, I'm really upset about Herman leaving, but you know, we can't afford it, so I understand. Um, I'm a military brat. My dad was in the Air Force for 21 years. I've lived in two different continents, three different countries, about 45 different places. And everybody says, are you from Texas? I said, yes, five different times I'm from Texas. <laughs> I love Texas. It's the best place to live anywhere. Um, I've been doing things like this for a long time. I spent 13 years in Fortune 500 companies. I actually helped open up the Kroger at the back of Kingwood. I helped open up the Kroger back of Tascacita. Um, I also opened up Four Albertsons in Wichita, Kansas. <clears throat> that's a place you don't want to live. So we're coming back here. <laughs> I hope nobody's from Kansas. <laughs> um, and I opened up a high school, Porter High School, and now I hope it's got the blessing to open up a state-of-the-art school here in Humble ISD. Um, and what is this school going to be? It's going to be a continuation of what Dr. Peters was saying, and it's going to be a STEAM campus. Has anybody ever read uh, Daniel Pink's book uh, about right brain people, that they're going to rule the world? Well, it's true, because STEAM, and everybody's heard of STEM, right? Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Well, STEAM actually incorporates the right side of the brain. And we really want these kids to have a balanced, balanced foundation when they go into high school and beyond. We're also going to tell them uh, and teach them how to think and do the engineering design process. Because if you think about it, technological information, it doubles every 12 months. So anything that we teach them in sixth grade, by the time they reach eighth grade, is going to be wrong or outdated. So we really need to teach them how to use that technology, how to hopefully design their own technology and be the leaders in the next generation. And speaking of it, Steve Jobs, he's a right brainer, right? So you got your right brain, you got your left brain, left brain's math, right brain's the artistic stuff. Well, how many people have iPhones here? Yeah, see? Did you know Android is probably a better phone, but iPhone is marketed so much better because of his right brain. So he's making a lot more money on it. Uh, next slide. Just a couple of great features about the school. Uh, the outdoor learning that I, I mentioned up on the third floor, they're also going to have outdoor learning here in the middle. Uh, there's also going to be a balcony here on the second floor for each grade to be able to do some outdoor learning. Um, natural day lighting, there's going to be a lot of glass. In fact, the walls of the classroom are glass. 
so that you can actually bring in a lot of that outside light. The light inside is going to be controlled by LED and computers, so when the light is bright outside, it's going to automatically lower inside. Pretty amazing things. Uh, next slide, please. Here's a sample of the hallway. So the teachers here, they're working with a the classroom. They've got a group of gifted kids, and they're just going to send them out to a little collaborative space right over here so they can actually record their videos or do their project without disturbing the rest of the class, but still being observed and being in a safe environment. The next slide, please. And I tell you, when I share this with the fifth graders, they get so excited because they are so pumped about this school. This is the inside of the classroom. And if you notice this little green line, that's where a wall used to be. It's a collapsible wall, similar to that right over there. And it can collapse down so that we can do collaborative projects in between the classes. Um, projector on the screen back here, but we don't, you know, whiteboards, this is a whiteboard, right? We don't have whiteboards, we have white walls, whiteboard walls, where they're going to actually be able to write on the walls, write on the glass. They're going to be able to collaborate anywhere and in that room. And this is just going to be a phenomenal experience for the kids. Next. Um, some of the things that we're going to focus on as well as keeping with the steam program is the engineering and, and aerospace. We're going to do rockets. We're going to do high altitude balloon launches. We're going to do CO2 cars. We're going to, we're going to do robot wars. We're going to excite these kids about science, technology, and engineering. And just to give you an overview, I'm also a computer programmer and I'm an artist, so I've got kind of a split brain going as well. That's what my wife says all the time. I'm really split brain. I don't think she needs it in the same way. Next, please. This is what the inside is going to look like. They're going three stories there. Uh, nice platform stage stairwell down here for students to perform for the orchestra or something during an open house. Next, please. Um, and we're going to send out a community survey November 8th through the 15th. We need your input because this school, yes, it's in the groves, but it services more than just the groves. It services uh, the South Park of Eagle Springs. It also services Lakeshore. So what do we want to name it? What does the community want to name it? Um, and here's the suggestions right now. Uh, Westlake is winning because it's kind of off Westlake. So that's kind of nice. So please look for that to come out and please give your input back. Next one, please. Also, I designed some logos. Um, we need some input. What do the kids want, want to be? So everybody can get excited about that. And notice the colors. They're going to be a little bit like Seattle Seahawks. Right, the college navy, the gray, and the highlight of the lime green. But please, when this comes out, please give us your input as well. Next, and that's the last slide, and there's my email address. If you would like to email me or ask any questions, or come out and see the school this summer, hopefully we'll be in April. Hopefully we don't have the same experience that Dr. Peters had. We'll not have a hurricane or anything like that. <laughs> we'll get right in there as soon as possible. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Looking at the pictures, um, I didn't see any lockers. Are there no lockers in this? Building? No, ma'am. There's going to be lockers for the athletic events, of course, because if you're in any sports, you're going to have to bring your stuff. Um, but inside the hallways, there's not going to be lockers because we're going to try to go technology all the way. The textbooks are going technology. Um, we're hopefully to have some devices inside the classroom for each child to be able to utilize, and they won't need to carry a whole bunch of stuff. So will this be the first Umbel ISD secondary school without any lockers built into it? No, ma'am, it's not. Okay. Any other questions? Great. Thank you. I'm over here trying to figure out if I want to try to go back to elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> middle school. <laughs> Pastor Jerry up here a couple of times already with a few hats on. He's had on his pastor hat and his fudge hat and his Go Astros hat. And now we're going to ask him to put on his chairman of the board for the Lake East Mary Chamber hat. Um, I had the opportunity to hear a little bit about this yesterday, so I'm very excited for you to share with the community about the Back to Business program. Pastor Jerry. Thank you. I want to just give you a quick update on our Back to Business program. Uh, one of the latest figures we've heard of, about 300 businesses uh, were affected or inundated with flooding. And that's not all, because there are a lot of home-based businesses where the home and the business got affected. So uh, one of the things that we want to do, we're the Lake Houston Area Chamber of Commerce, where business matters, where businesses are 
important. And uh, so we launched this initiative <coughs> to help businesses get reopened. And one of the statistics that's been shared is that about 40 percent of those businesses that got affected or closed down may not ever come back. But we want to change that number. And so we wanted to be proactive in getting out in front and helping uh, these businesses get back open as quickly as they possibly can and to be viable again. So uh, your help and uh, the community help will really be a blessing to us. And listen, this is an initiative that's not just aimed at chamber members. All businesses in this area are important to the Chamber of Commerce because uh, we want to see people back at work, we want to see people producing income and serving the community and opening the businesses that we need uh, when we go out and try to get goods and services. So we're here um, to do that. We also, uh, the Chamber just hired Andrew Cardenas to oversee the back to business. Stand up right quick. He's the man, so if you're here today, <laughs> business, tell him to call the chamber, see him. He has everything he needs to get going and helping you to get back up and running. Don't you? Okay. I'm just checking. Let's go to the next one. Uh, back to business. Uh, we're targeting businesses in Humble, Kingwood, Atascacita, and Summer Creek. Two focuses, business recovery and then reopening promotions to let people know that the businesses are reopened. Uh, so we, we're going to emphasize those, and we have several resources to do so. Uh, if you want to go to the website, there's one that established a back to Houston, the Houston area, L H A back to Biz .com. We have in-person resources, uh, uh, this disaster recovery center that's helping businesses right now. We've done a few seminars already. There are some more that's coming up to help. The online resources for FEMA and all that, and you left and right brain people, you can read the rest of that. That's good. Cool. <laughs> okay, uh, back to business. We have some partners that are helping us again. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, but you can go to uh, Lake Houston Back to Business .org, Lake Houston Area Back to Business .org. Let's go. Um, there's some reopening promotions. We're asking you if you uh, see a business that's reopened, help us post it. Go back to uh, Instagram or our Facebook page, or you know how to do that kind of stuff. You don't have to use smartphones that are not wise. And uh, use them and, and promote them and uh, tag people. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't use those phones. I, I just use my phone for talking. That's what I do. So I don't know how to do all the other stuff. But you all know how to do that stuff. So just share. Oh, that's what you do. You share, let people know who's open again. Pretty little thing. Whataburger, man, that was a big opening back there in uh, Kingwood. I mean, everybody was happy to see Whataburger again. You know? <laughs> you know, so if you got a business, you're the first one open. Everybody's happy to see you, so this is a good time to get that done. Math Nation, so we're promoting that. We're letting people know because when people see businesses coming back to life, there's, there's more hope and there's a, an excitement in that. Here are our community partners, Observer Newspaper, in, our Community Impact Newspaper, Kingwood.com, Metascacita.com, The Tribune, KSBJ, God's listening to us when we share. All right. Uh, here's, here's ways you can help. You can inform us about your businesses when, um, if you still need some help, uh, get with us at the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, there's also our Lake Houston Area Relief Fund. Uh, that, are you going to talk about?